With the holidays approaching, our sponsor, Waterboy, is here to help you prepare for those nasty holiday hangovers. Waterboy is a hydration powder, scientifically formulated to cut your hangover time in half. There are other hydration packs on the market, but nothing comes anywhere close to fighting those Sunday scaries like Waterboy. With zero sugar and over three times the electrolytes or liquid IV, your hangover can stand no chance. Unlike their competitors, Waterboy has added specific ingredients beyond just hydration to help with nausea, anxiety, and fatigue. Hundreds of thousands of people already trust Waterboy as their hangover cure. It's time to stop dealing with that hangover anxiety alone. For a limited time, my listeners get an exclusive 15% off discount with our link at waterboy.com slash big. That's 15% off waterboy.com forward slash big. It is time to ho-ho hydrate this holiday season. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. I will say I've had a really positive experience with them in the past. So basically what BetterHelp will do is give you a resource on your phone, you know, quickly launch it at your fingertips. It's online. I like BetterHelp because I think it's really streamlined talk therapy for everyone everywhere. And, you know, we live in an age now where mental health is talked about frequently, but what BetterHelp will do is it will have you fill out the questionnaire and then you will get matched with licensed therapists. So find your bright spot this holiday season with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash big name today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H E L P.com slash big name. Are we on a podcast yet? Yeah. Fantastic. We're talking. I hope we keep that part in. Okay. I want people to know how real and organic we are. <laughs> How of the people? Like, look, I'm just on my We're phone. We're just on your phone. Yeah, like, what? We have lives. It's actually a nice departure from like being on set where, first of all, normal sets are freezing cold. Am yeah, I right? they are, aren't they? Uh, yeah, why? Or roasting hot. Oh, really? Have you, is that your experience? Oh, yeah. We, uh, I guess um, back in the day, we didn't have proper like AC. So they would pop it. They, they had the snakes and they would have the AC through these like oh snakes. oh coil uh, yeah silver. yeah so how funny wow you are, every t- whenever I think you're old you prove me so right snakes <laughs> just kidding snakes on a plane snakes ha <laughs> you got to get rid of I'm snakes old on a plane. I don't know what we're talking about <laughs> no, you're I'm not like old. a Biden moment I, you're so you're not like a, a month older than me I don't know why I think it's funny to do that am I a month older than you I think we're both thirty eight uh, okay well um, I'm almost thirty nine you know people were commenting not too long ago about um, how we made this comment about uh, Ashley Tisdale. I have to tell you about this. Oh my God. Can you... that just be like a reoccurring I love it. We're going to get her. Love it. She needs the press too, right? No, she doesn't. She doesn't. I'm kidding. I hope that's a soundbite. No, no first kidding. of all, I just think it's, I think it's wonderful. I think we <laughs> I know. It's like, because it's not. It's, it's not real. It's, it's just, also, it's not real. We don't have bad intention. But feud, listen. Feud between Tisdale, yeah. Christy Carson Rolano, and Annalisa Vanderpoel. It's like, what happened? It's we so, don't know. It's so arbitrary. <laughs> okay, but check this out. <laughs> now I can't even remember. So um, on the one of our episodes that you, we were chatting about how, mm-hmm. I don't know, it was our first episode. Yeah. You were chatting about how she was, you know, she waited on, you waited on her. You waited on her. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this new generation of Disney kids, right? Like, they don't understand how hard we had it. And I'm not, Oh, I am not minimizing anyone's struggle, mm-hmm. first and foremost. Mm-hmm. And second, because we don't know, right? Mm-hmm. And, and secondly, what I meant by that was we came a good, I would say five years prior to High School Musical. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. The Disney network. You, was, maybe even yeah, longer. longer because I am so old. <laughs> I, I am not, your ancestor. I, <laughs> I am your ancestor. No, but how, how soon? Uh, no, no, was no. no. Two thousand. When I was sixteen, on my sixteenth birthday was when we did our like first week of filming. Oh, okay. If not first day. Um. So that's how I know I was sixteen when we started. Even Stevens. I was fourteen when we did the pilot. I'm forty. Do the fucking math. I'm thirty nine. But okay. really, you know what I'm saying? Like that's how long that relationship spans back to. Right. And that's when they first really started. And Courtney Draper, they did the jersey, mm-hmm, like your bestie. Mm-hmm. And so there was a, you know, that, that was a that was the first round of all that stuff coming out on on like the magic started. Um, but then, you know, high school musical was like 10 years after that. Right, I mean, right. it was a long, long time. Mm-hmm. So what I meant by that, mm-hmm. uh, to address some of the hate or the confusion, I should say. Is that, you know, we were a first generation, which came with a certain amount of responsibility Mm -hmm. and also kind of like a it was a kind of a cluster F, you know, it was like, well, what are we doing? And and you can't you can't say that Mm -hmm. you have to you can't show skin and you can't, you know, wear certain things. Whereas when they were getting a a little bit more relaxed, it's you know what it's like 
I liken it to this. When you have really strict parents with like the first kid mm -hmm. and then by like the third kid, yes. they're like, oh, I don't That's even know where they are example. right now. That's such a good parallel for Cause, sure. Because literally I will sit back and I'll see like Disney have to deal with this drama or this kid that mm -hmm. this that. And I'm just like, wow. Yeah, I did see that comment though. Somebody's saying like, you know, <laughs> Ashley had it hard too. It's like, of course, of course. Please yes. don't take everything we say so literally. First yeah, of all. this is just our opinions too, yes, guys. And like, I always thought you meant we were, we were tougher in the sense that we were theater kids. And theater kids are tough. I mean, I'm sorry, but she that's... is a theater kid too. That's what the haters are going to say. Oh. Haters are going to be like, she was, she was in Les Mis. She was in Les Mis. Oh, uh, okay. I don't even mean it as a comparison. Yes, then. I just mean you said we were tough. We were really tough. I, I, I guess this is okay. You want me to be honest with you? I think that we weren't able to get social media and all that shit because we came before it, and so it was very hard for us to to bridge our careers. Over time, they had a leg up in that, in that situation. Totally, totally. With the same amount of exposure on the same network. Right. That's it. That's and what I meant that's by all. it. And, we, very, and by the way, guys, I love Big Name because I, we can clear air and be extremely authentic with you mm -hmm. and tell you and address certain aspects. But we're not going to address every hateful comment. Like, we yeah. don't have time for that shit. No. And I like staying in a very bitter bitter state and that just feels you don't want to grow <laughs> i'm just kidding you're a dark soul I'm i mean we need to keep soul. that soul dark babe. <laughs> and speaking of dark mm. souls here we have a diet coke wow that we're drinking. now tell me what's in this diet coke <laughs> you know oh god we don't know we don't know and we well caffeine i could tell you that much, okay for sure which is the most important isn't thing that funny ever. that we don't know how many people try to scare you about drinking diet coke how many people are well, like, oh, it's so bad, right? It, yeah, they're linking it to a lot of like horrible things. I really? Think. I don't know. What do I care? I need it to survive. When? When do they start linking it to horrible the things? Aspartame is uh, related to cancer. And aspartame is technically in Diet Coke because that's what makes it diet. It's because you're dying when you drink okay, it. I just, I like just got welled up with anxiety. <laughs> is that weird? I'm, I'm drinking Coke. You're drinking Diet Coke. I know. I just welled up. I'm going to put this down. But like, do you think no, that's real? That scares the, just drink the Coke. You're going to die anyway, Annalisa. I know. It's some My point. husband is obsessed with living forever. Sometimes I look at him, I'm like, I'm out by 82, babe. Actually, that's really I'm interesting out. because I was um, thinking last night, Jono and I were like getting into this kind of, this conversation about why did it come up i think we were watching below deck i don't know why this came up but death and what happens after you die mm. what do you think happens after you die like are you religious do you believe in i used to i was i was raised very catholic mm -hmm. i used to really truly believe in heaven and hell and i used to think that when i prayed i was speaking directly to jesus mm -hmm. I identify I, at, with Jesus, but at the same time, I identify with my higher power. Mm -hmm. And Jesus and higher power to me are the same thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so when I'm speaking to like whatever entity or, or force that I feel like I can connect with, mm -hmm. um, I don't I don't know. It feels very grounding to me, especially as somebody in recovery. It's kind of just like I need to check in with that mm -hmm. from time to time when mm -hmm. I feel really kind of out of my body. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so there's that. That's kind of like the beginning and end of my spirituality. And like, I also think like, uh, you got to be authentic in a way that's like healthy for yourself. You got to have mental health be a, a priority so that you don't go off the rails. Because let me tell you what, I have two sisters who I feel like don't prioritize their mental health and mm -hmm. we don't talk because of that. Mm -hmm. And I feel like the older they get, the more I see uh, the the product of them not taking care of their mental health. Mm -hmm. It's I think the brain is a tissue. It's an organ. Like, mm -hmm. like if you don't work it out, mm -hmm. though, if you don't take care of it, it atrophies. Ooh, it, wow. What a good atro way of, absolutely, atrophies. absolutely. I always say in AA, they say, you know, well, here we are working on ourselves because we have a problem, but really everybody should work, be working on themselves. Yeah, we have this great excuse to work on ourselves, which is addiction yeah. or alcoholism, yeah. right? And everybody else gets to just act like assholes in the world. It's like, <laughs> no, you probably have something too. But anyway, it's hard. It's hard to find a good therapist. It's hard that to- That was some deep convo you were having with your man. I was, I was. I honestly- I'm scared of death. I think about mm. it probably too often. And like, uh, r no joke, when you just said that about the Diet Coke, I welled up with anxiety. Like I'm my, so my sorry. body got hot. But I, I'm glad I told you though, so though you know. Well, like, is it do too your late? Own research. Listen, with everything, guys, do your own research. Cause like- Is it too late though, honestly? I'm like making you be a doctor now. Like, like uh, I've drink, been drinking Diet Coke like addictively for 20 years. I mean, are you, you know, both of my parents uh, had rare cancer and my dad ended up passing from eye cancer. Oh. It, yeah, he was in remission for a long time and he didn't take care of his body. You oh, know, he would drink Coke all the time, Diet Coke. But I mean, that's not helping. Sorry, that's going to give you more anxiety. But um, I guess the point is, is like, I'm okay with dying. 
Yeah, it's we really were weird. Talking about it's it. really weird. Like I, I, I think it's so interesting that I, I I'm uh, married to somebody who's literally faced death in the face right. and wants nothing more than to live. Uh, he lives with chronic pain, mm. and like sometimes when I'm really sick, he'll be like, "Actually, that's kind of how I feel," and I'm always like, "God, you feel like this every day." And and it's like and it's really hard, but for me, first of all, it's really hard for you to complain ever, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is. Trust yeah. me. You're well, like, oh, I also, well, you have chronic pain. I mean, so. well, if you oh, you're on your talk period, about... who cares? <laughs> Are you I don't, bleeding for seven days. I don't feel sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> I know chronic pain is really interesting to be a partner of somebody with chronic yeah, pain. Yeah, that sounds really difficult. Um, but at the same time, um, it's more difficult to be him. But then again, we we trade off because we were just talking about I'm leaving tonight um, to get home and I'm going to get home fairly late. By the time I get home, it'll be one in the morning, mm -hmm. probably more like one thirty. And then technically with what I do to wake up at five forty in the morning, just so my kids are at school on time, I would be getting like four hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. And it's like this is kind of the plight of a working parent is, you know, if you're really kind of moms are technically what they call a default parent where like you end up being the person that does the stuff, mm -hmm, like the, mm -hmm. the hard stuff. Mm -hmm. Like my daughter had lice, so I was the one that sprayed her hair because he was like, oh no, I don't wanna catch that. Um, but it's not because he's a bad dad. It's of just because not. he's got, you know, he's, his body works in different ways. And this is really truly no hate, no hate on him. I'd rather, and I'm also kind of a control freak. It's, I'd rather be the one that's like you? the default. <laughs> Come on. You're the best kind of control freak. Somebody's got to have control. I know Somebody's I don't. Somebody's got to steer the ship, guys. <laughs> I know. I don't have control. Ooh. I've all, Even when I directed, because I was I was looking towards directing it at one point. I know. You were going to direct Raven's Home. I, well, Except no, that, that was actually happen. a mistake. What do you mean? I wasn't supposed to be there. <gasps> well, how'd you get on set? I know. They literally had me cleared to go through security and everything. I mean, I even had trouble getting through security so <laughs> some of those days. <laughs> A lie. <laughs> For real, I mean, it was pretty locked down. Ever since 9 11, all of the all of the lots have been locked down mm -hmm. a lot more. With the holidays approaching, our sponsor, Waterboy, is here to help you prepare for those nasty holiday hangovers. There's nothing worse than feeling like the Grinch while everyone else in the family is rocking around the Christmas tree. Waterboy is a hydration powder scientifically formulated to cut your hangover time in half. There are other hydration packs on the market, but nothing comes anywhere close to fighting those Sunday scaries like Waterboy. With zero sugar and over three times the electrolytes or liquid IV, your hangover can stand no chance. Unlike their competitors, Waterboy has added specific ingredients beyond just hydration to help with nausea, anxiety, and fatigue. Let me tell you what, I have been hungover a lot in my life, which is why I am sober now, but that doesn't mean that other people can't enjoy it responsibly. And I am all for people enjoying responsibly. I truly, truly am. But something like this is fantastic. My mom always used to tell me, if you're going to drink, make sure you have a glass of water in between. Well, sometimes that doesn't happen, but you still need something that's going to help you get back to yourself. Uh, so I do like this product. I think it's a really, really good idea. And again, we all know that hydration alone isn't enough to help after a holiday bender. And it is not just for you. Water Boys Hangover Recovery Formula is a thoughtful stocking stuffer or a fantastic gift for your loved ones. Hundreds of thousands of people already trust Water Boy as their hangover cure. It's time to stop dealing with that anxiety alone. For a limited time, my listeners get an exclusive 15% off discount with our link at waterboy.com slash big. That's 50% off waterboy.com forward slash big. It is time to ho ho hydrate this holiday season. But um, yeah, I, I went in and, and um, Corey, who's the head of original programming or whatever, who had tried to help me get mentored into the directing, uh, you know, uh, community of mm -hmm. Disney Channel. Uh, he was like, um, we have, a, it was a mistake. You were actually supposed to go to Bizarre Vark or some other show that they had going. And so I was like, oh, so I sat through a whole round of you guys doing a run through, a run through, which uh, was, but it was really interesting to see the dynamic on Raven's home because it, it I would, I would imagine it was different. Um, and then with that read through, it was very much like, uh, oh, and you know what else? I sat through some of the administrative or executive, uh, like after you guys stop reading, mm -hmm. then they yeah, have an notes. executive meeting, meeting yeah. and, and that's really to be a fly on the wall. That was where I saw like Raven be like that uh, e executive producer where right. she's like that Joan Jack that joke didn't work this didn't work mm -hmm. and it was like oh wow this is what it's like to be a showrunner but I do think that like w directing for me the approach to that like leadership and whatever mm -hmm. is maternal 
So I'm always like, I go to the maternal energy of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have to. It's just like how I, I can that. That's connect. why I like female directors so much. Mm-hmm. I feel like they're taking care of everybody. Um, yeah. I would love to be a fly yeah. on the wall in like casting offices. No you know? way. Are you kidding me? I oh, mean, not God. anymore, but. That would I, be my hell. I had if some, I went to hell, it would mean? be, I'd have a fl- <laughs> My hell would be a fly on the wall in oh, a casting office. I don't know. I mean, I know because it seems like so um, like they're just evil or something. But I uh, used to audition for Michael Donovan a lot, who's a casting director out here in L.A. for all the theater in L.A. and outside of L.A. touring companies and everything. And he offered that to me one time. And I don't I didn't take him up on it. I think I just was busy. Yeah. And I wish I had because he was like, it's very interesting. Like I he was sending me out a lot and I was getting callbacks, but not booking it. And I was yeah. just, I really emailed him. I was like, what's going on? You know, and he's yeah. like, you have to understand it's just an essence. It's just a vibe. We know pretty much right away and one day you'll be right and I I was yeah. um, at some some points and for some things mm. um, yeah there's no there's no magic to it it's really just a numbers game I remember I auditioned I with him through him for something called a dram of drum hicket at the La Jolla Playhouse and it was to play like a Scottish um, fairy uh, during the time of like bogs in Scotland okay and um, I did a really good job they were looking for somebody for forever I don't even know why I'm telling the story this but- is cool <clears throat> just go with it I am. So yeah, I, I want to see you as a Scottish fairy. I could kind of. We're wearing green today. I was fabulous, and I do kind of feel like you look like a Scottish fairy. I'm not gonna lie. Thank you. Wait, uh, you got the part. I got the part. Oh um, my gosh. Um, Wait, uh, could you do a Scottish fairy voice? Oh, let's see. Like, roll, roll in your arms. Like, like, roll like, in your arms. Roll, roll in your arms. Like, like that. Like, oh. like, I th- I'd have to get like read something about it or something. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, you have to like listen to it. I'm going in and out of an Irish accent. But yeah, I have to hear it first. Yeah. And, and then you can mimic it. Yes. It's imitation, right? Yeah. Um, have you always been good with... Uh, I am, but I truly like... I can do a great Polish accent, but I have to listen to Meryl Streep and Sophie's Choice. Oh, my God. You know what I'm saying? Or like, I can do Barbara Streisand, but it's I'm much better if I hear it right away. Yeah. Um... Mm-hmm. And of course, I'm, I'm never very sorry. But anyway, I got this part. What? It's just the segue is bad. Anyway, I got the part. Mm-hmm. And um, it was in La Jolla. I, you know, we had rehearsed for about a couple days. And I remember um, it was Chris. Was it Christopher Brown? The, the guy who directed and won a Tony for Memphis. OK. Um, Christopher something. Okay. Um, not not a nice, not a nice guy. OK. I mean, he directed you in this. He was directing. Okay. I wouldn't even say if you call directing sitting at a chair and kind of just sprouting out random notes. Yeah. Have you ever had somebody direct from a chair the whole time and never get up? <laughs> okay. Well, I had an audition with Andrew Lloyd Webber. That was <gasps> n- yeah. He- That's cool. Okay. So I was. A, I wait. W- let me just finish this. Yeah, so yeah. I um. I'm sorry. Did I yeah. yell at you? No. Like, no wait. <laughs> no. No. He he. So that experience was. He was sitting in the chair. Oh, you're so sweet to get take me back to. It. Yeah, he was and he was he was talking the entire time. He was talking the entire time, kind of just like anyway. It, it was really weird because they were looking for somebody for a while. I think they were having trouble finding somebody with like a, a fun spirit, who had a good Scottish accent, right? But also who was willing to get nude oh. in this in this play. And I was. I it was like from far away on stage, and you know, it was just for a second. Anyway, I kind of always thought it was weird. I thought it wasn't needed, and I remember my mom kind of being upset about it. And so I kind of challenged him a little bit on it, just a little, just trying to find out what, what the reason was. Then in a couple rehearsals, I was having fun. I was joking around. I was being maybe a little silly, maybe in the sense of not taking the script as seriously as I should, in the sense that I sort of judged it. I thought the script wasn't great. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of trying to bond with my cast members in that same way, like I was telling that Chrissy, the, ooh, I almost said the name, um, <laughs> uh, right, uh, in that story about Chicago. Uh-huh. It's okay. You can leave that in because I didn't say her last name. Um, anyway, it was me. A couple. I know, right? <laughs> a couple days in, um, he pulls me aside and he said, "You know, I don't really know what you're doing out there. I really need you to work on your stuff. It seems like you're not taking it seriously." And I was, uh, I, I know when I was like, "It's like soul crushing." It was soul crushing. It was the first time it happened. Yeah, and. Um, I, I used that weekend to get insanely prepared, like insanely prepared. And I already was prepared, but I think they just didn't like my attitude. Mm. Anyway, I, the weekend came. I was so prepared. I was all memorized. I did a really great job. He said after that rehearsal, thank you so much for taking my notes and taking it seriously. I really appreciate it. See you tomorrow. The next day I show up, he takes me in before we go to rehearsal. He says, I'm going to have to let you go. Oh, I, I was so confused. Oh. I know because I was really like, no, I'm talented. What is this about? Like oh. it was one and I, it wasn't a drinking thing or right, you know right. what I mean? What the fuck? It was really weird. I think the person he wanted originally came through. I think the girl that he actually wanted that he worked with originally. Came An through. actual That's what I think. naked Scottish fairy. Exactly. Exactly. But anyway, my mother said that the best thing, the moral of the story is I called my mother on the way, way home because I was in La Jolla. I had to unpack all my stuff, repack my stuff to drive yeah. home. Yeah. Um, and my mother said, Oh, come home, Annalisa, come home. I didn't want you naked on that stage anyway. And then I said, I know, mom, but I'm fired. I'm fired. And she said, what did you think? You'd be the only person in the world to never get fired. 
And it just made being fired so real, so okay. Everybody gets fired. Everybody. Yeah. You know, and of course, it's okay to make mistakes. I see young people on reality shows getting fired all the time. Like I watch Below Deck. Ooh. and Oh, we got to talk about reality shows. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, my, um, I love them. I love them. So we've decided. We talked about that audition with Angeloid Weber. Oh, okay. That's and then, People are going to want to know about that. Okay. I almost went to take a sip of my Diet Coke again, but I'm just nervous. Just fucking drink the Coke. You're going to die anyway. That's my theory. You live once. Tomorrow? It's not, it's not cocaine. Mm-mm-mm. Okay. It's diet cocaine. I know, right? Yeah. So I basically no, no, there was a there was a show, we're doing the theater girl energy, and I hope you like it. <laughs> oh, also, this would be the time we bring in a guest, but we are not doing that today. Boop, 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 today boop, boop. we're off the rails. It's just us. It's just us. Deal with it. Yeah, it's us drinking diet coke. What a great way, way to sell myself. It's <laughs> us. Deal with it. <laughs> okay, so basically, I was a kid, and um, it was whistle down the wind. It was this show called Whistle. Do you know Whistle this? in the Wind? No, Whistle, Whistle down. down the Wind. No, no. And it's it's an Andrew Lloyd Webber show. And at the time that it was new, it was like a really uh, coveted role to get. And it was the it was the girl in it. Oh my gosh, how cool, Christy! Uh, um, yeah, it was very cool. I used to be. I used to be when I was a kid. I would always be one of the three. One right, of right, the, right. You know. So, um, so anyway, basically went in, sang my song, which was "Since I Don't Have You" from Greece. Oh, I was my go-to song because yeah. it could really show my little my little belty voice at Sing whatever ten or eleven. And I don't have plans and schemes. Yeah. Oh God, are we doing it? Are we and singing it? I oh God. <clears throat> okay. Don't have anything. And I don't have anything, anything since I don't have you. you. That was my go-to song. It's a for, great song. What is it, Dusty Springfield? Uh, I'm it, you, something girl, from you know the sixties, seventies. I used to sing and that song all the time too. That's so it's a weird. Really good song. It's a great song. Because at the end, it's like you, you, yeah, you, yeah. Oh, you're a good yeah. riffer, Chris. You sound so good. I, 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 you know, you like you have to stop telling yourself you're not. You almost made me start to believe like maybe she's not really. I don't know how she had that career because you <laughs> talk so crappy on the show. And then I hear you singing. I'm like, okay, she's full of shit. <laughs> No, but seriously, I, 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 you have to. St- yeah, isn't, isn't, isn't stop putting that self on destructive behavior is like such a, it's a self so fulfilling. Yeah, prophecy. it's a self fulfilling prophecy. It's like, you know, if you don't see yourself mm-hmm. as a, as, as that bitch, mm-hmm. how are you ever going to sell that to anybody else in the world? Well, just and it's just be not, that bitch. It's just not true when you say those things. You're probably things. right. You're all, you know what? How many not true things do we tell ourselves. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm telling you this right? advice to take it myself. Yes, yeah. it's always, but that's why we're here together too. I think that's why this space is really going to be healing for us over time mm-hmm. because we may not know what the fuck we're doing. Mm-hmm. I and, have no idea what I'm doing. But uh, but we, but we're doing it together. We're finding a way to connect with everybody on this podcast. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we, we recently were on Chicks in the Office um, and they yes, were, yes, that was fun. They, they were, were eye super fucking supportive. Yeah, weren't they? They were. They I got it. And by the way, I got a message from Hannah Burner today. Oh my gosh, what'd she say? I she, love her. She, I love her so much. I know. I can't wait for you guys to meet. I love, I just shout out Summer to House. Her, yeah. Shout out to Hannah oh on Summer House. And no, not that. Shout, shout out to her and her stand up <laughs> comedy and her husband. You guys are going to be besties for sure. Oh, she seems so cool. She she puts up with my shit. I love her page. I love their merch. I love that newsletter that they're doing. Uh huh. We're going to start doing that. I know. I'd love to. We don't have the time. <laughs> I'm so busy. We don't have the staff or the time I'm, for a newsletter yet, but maybe someday. I'm so uh, busy. We're a baby pod and we're just having fun. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. So, BetterHelp is a tool, a resource um, that is at the, you know, power of your fingertips. This is what I like about it. Um, I used it uh, when I was moving from California to Austin. And I am going to be moving again. And all I can say is that I am totally triggered by how stressful moving is, uh, on top of it being the holidays. Life throws you curveballs. And having something like BetterHelp for you to use uh, as a resource, I think, is really, really, really helpful. Uh, We live in a day and age where uh, help isn't, it's not stigmatized anymore you know, putting your mental health first, especially during the holidays, especially if you're sober like myself, uh, it, it's very important. And if you've had therapy in the past and you've had bad experiences, this kind of gives you a little bit more leeway to dip your toe back into it. I encourage people to try and utilize resources around them when they are as simple as this. 
You fill out a brief questionnaire and then you get matched with a licensed therapist. And again, you can switch therapist at any time for no additional charge. So find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash big name today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, dot com slash big name. But it is really lovely to see these other girlies, like the chicks in the office mm-hmm. crew, even the caller daddies, yeah. but the the giggly squads and burner phone. But Hannah texted me and she was like, love the pod, by the way. Oh, really? And I was like, hell oh, yeah. yeah. She listens. Do you, did you tell her that we love her? I, I really do She love invited hers. me because she's always in Austin. Austin, Texas is actually a really big comedy hub. Right, right. It's become this huge Not comedy. just a music scene. No, and honestly, I feel like the music scene really is Nashville. It's not as oh, much. Oh, interesting. It's adjusted. Okay. COVID, COVID has really changed the musicianship. And also the rents being so high has chased out a lot of the artists. Oh, it sucks. It does suck. And so I don't, I feel like you could, could probably always see a, like a like a top name person come through Austin for mm-hmm. a performance mm-hmm. because we have the Moody Center. But at the same time, like it's just not what people think it is. Like we're 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 Austin is like supposed to be the live music capital of the country, and mm-hmm. it's truly not. It's the food scene, baby. Yeah, baby. And that food scene keeps me staying and dealing yeah. with a hundred and a hundred and fifty days of a hundred degree weather. Oh, that's been my life. That's that is. That's insane, and it's only going to get worse. I know. I, I, tr- I know. Trust me, I know. Climate change is one of the yeah, and I and yeah. I try not. The to... humidity in California is no joke. I know. Well, when I moved away from California in 2020, there were mosquitoes in Orange County. Yeah, so I know. There's and mosquitoes. I was, and my husband now. was like, "I grew up in OC. Like we, we yeah. never had fucking mosquitoes." I know. It's it's. I know. I can't talk about it. Yeah, don't talk about it because it's fucking sad. Yeah, I was at sushi. I went to this really great sushi place called Sushi Bar. Shout out to Sushi Bar in Austin. And um, it was an omakase. You have like six people. Everyone's so excited. Okay. They were like literally waiting for reservations for months. And they get in and this guy's like, um, says something about, um, oh man, you know, it's the world is just, it's just crazy out there. You know, it's just, it's uh, what do we do or something? And he asked some random question and I look at the guy oh, and no. his name oh, is no. like George or something. And I was like, that's because the world is dying, George. Yeah. He, I took the, yeah. <laughs> I took the, but I, I said it in a very dry sense of humor, which I don't, t- I don't do that right, much. Right, right. And, and he That's was straight fave. up, I love it. I was like so morbid. <clears throat> and, um, and he was, and he, he was struck and he was making the sushi and he was like, uh, uh, why? He was just like, why did you just bring the mood down with talking yeah, about climate yeah, change? Yeah, yeah, thanks, thanks. I think I said it wasn't dying. Now I enjoy think, your I think I said it was salmon burning Harrell. down. Or I said something really morbid. Yeah. If you ever want to just like uh, really fuck with people, just just talk about climate change. Just talk about climate yeah. Just talk about the reality yeah, outside your window. what a fun window. topic. <laughs> what about the people who still don't believe in it? Oh, I and of course, I digress. This, ah, girl, this I is a that. thing. This will be merch. I want a hat that says I digress. Bitch, we are doing that. I just got a text from Bitch, my father. I said what I, I said. said. <laughs> <laughs> On the lip couch. Um, but check it. So Andrew Lloyd Webber spoke through my oh, entire you. little girl audition. And you gotta understand that. Like that was the pinnacle of what I was <gasps> meant to do. I was he like, He spoke through it. He was talking. Uh, he was sit, you know, like in chorus uh, line, like in that movie, he like there's he's sitting like all the way in the middle of the orchestra with a chair that with one of those like, you know, uh, tables where the other people are, you know, stage managers are sitting there and checking off and casting. Mm -hmm. And he's sitting right in the middle of the like orchestra aisle. And he's just sitting there. He's a, he was a large guy Mm -hmm. and he was just talking the whole time. He could not give a fuck about the fact that I was like one of the three options because right after I left, they called in everybody the, the, the choices, their top choices, mm-hmm. and you heard them all scream and enjoy. En- <gasps> and that was on my way out. Christine, now, as a I little know, kid, why? But that's what I'm why saying, as a little this? kid, and I, as a little kid, you just don't want to deal with that. But I really am not a fan of the casting process. Um, I know that a lot of people are like, I'm so done with acting because I, all I do is I send in these, uh, these tapes. Same, so I'm same. like, I'm sorry, this is, this is an unpopular opinion. Was it really that fucking hard to like prop your fucking iPhone up and say the lines? Oh like, yeah, it's much worse being in the room for sure. Yeah, I personally have just so much trauma it's from also, it's, audition rooms. Uh, well, and, I have trauma from both. I think the self yeah. tapes suck. It all yeah. suck. The, the amount of material they make you learn when they have no, um, no, they're not even going to watch the tape is really terrible. But I that's guess, what this yeah. strike is all about. And I guess and all boo hoo. People are working in mines. Yeah. You know, there are firefighters out there. I get it. I, I mean, guess. I get it. I get it. There's much more difficult things in life. Um, but it's just so funny. I always think these could these. That's why we have to tell each 
each other these stories as actors, as women, mm. to bond, to know that it happens to everybody, to know yeah. we're all in the same boat. I've had so many terrible audition stories. I auditioned for something recently that I got a call back for. Okay. And I flew out because I got a call back and they seemed really, really interested. In New York. You flew in New out York. to New York. I flew out to New York. Okay. You know, they said they were interested. Usually if they're really, really interested, they'll pay for your flight. Oh, but I was I like, let me just, this is a good opportunity. And I knew that that director was going to direct something much bigger that I was also interested in. And I worked so hard on it. And it was three different roles in the show. I, I thought it was great. I went into the audition and the same thing. They were really talking during it. And as soon as I was done, the director stood up and said to the casting director, um, can we, so something like before I even grabbed my book off the <gasps> piano place. Oh God. He stood that's up. Such, and, and by the way, that's such a vulnerable time. It's like so, you, yeah. You, after you've performed, you've performed, you've exposed yourself to whoever's like, you know, supposed to give you a job. Mm -hmm. And then you literally have to, the, the seconds of walking from where you were to that piano. Yes. It's really like time slows down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it did. And But anyway, he like got up right away and asked the person, the casting director, the director asked the casting director, can we take a break now? I really have to pee. And it was some. It was something like that. He had yeah. to pee. But, but which was, it was like he didn't even acknowledge me and that I knew he was thinking about peeing the, the whole time, you know? Yeah. It was like, why did you bring me in? You have no... He had no interest. That's yeah. the thing. I could tell from the start they had already cast it mm. or he wasn't really interested. It was just somebody to compare. Mm. The one person or the two people well, that they the want. what about the casting person? Like, did they have any... Uh, I No, no. Yeah. And I really... I called my agent. I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. That was crazy. That was really disrespectful. Didn't you just tell me that you kind of broke up with an agent? Or oh, yeah. I broke up new? with a lot. No, I'm not with anybody. Okay, so what was that like? What was your recent breakup with? I mean, it was funny. I, I left my agent. And I just... I said, I'm, you know... Um, that must have been a hard call, though. What do you mean to really give it up? OK, so I've broken up with my agent and management team, but that was only when I was at like the the height of my depression drinking. Mm -hmm. I moved back to New York and kind of cut my hair off. And I was before right before I met my husband. But I was like done with the industry. Mm -hmm. I had to be like really like in a real place to mm -hmm. be like, I'm, yeah. guys, I'll call you when I think I'm out of this. I mean, I'm not done because I get offers. I mean, you're still immensely talented and you're still doing things uh, yeah, yeah yeah and, I, and I, but, I'm but, but so you, grateful but you telling that person like we're done here yes was surprising he was like what are you gonna do and I was like I don't know I'll figure it out luckily I teach and I tell my students this all the time if you want to be an, a famous like get out of this if you think this is gonna make you happy that's it can make you happy it's made me very happy and uh, help I think me afford fulfillment things. and happiness different things oh totally totally because like, it's like but my students they mm -hmm. think they're gonna be so famous they think they're gonna you know, that that's tr tr truly the, everybody wants to be famous, right? And it's so funny. No one's famous. No one's Leonardo DiCaprio or. Oh yeah. Like that kind of famous. Anymore. Denzel Washington. Not anymore. Viola De yeah. But even they aren't. They're, they're, no, I know. But, and they're older, like the Tom Cruises, that's no longer, right? Yeah, There's no, really. everyone's famous because no one's famous kind of a thing. But yeah. Um, I went to a Janet Jackson concert. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember Janet Jackson from growing up and people just being like, like crying over like seeing her. Right. Raven and, was, that's Raven Simone. <laughs> oh, is it? She, yeah. But that's what I'm saying is like, I went to the concert. Nobody was crying. The seats were not filled. Like if it, if it was sold out, it, was, it wasn't like people were like literally waiting for her to get on stage. Right. It wasn't the Chanting Taylor Swift her concert. name. Like it really wasn't. Mm -hmm. And, and it was one of those things where I'm like, holy shit. Even when she was dancing, and singing and like she was killing it. Mm -hmm, of course. And I had orchestra seats. Um, I actually got them for uh, the woman who helps me with my children. Mm. Um, I really don't like to say nanny because I feel like it's just like ugh, and cringy. But um, Nanny McPhee. <laughs> she's she's like she's like my family, my wife, right. basically. She's my wife. <laughs> um, but for real, like I was like, hey, do you want to go see Janet with me? Oh, I love it. It was like cute. a Christmas present. And yeah, then, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and, and she cried, you know what I mean? Like she was a of real course, fan. Of course, of course. But it was sad to see that like, like even the folks that were older that could afford those orchestra seats, like they were vibing. But what my point is, is that it's never going to be like the Beatles. Human influence, right, right. human influence has, has died down. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, it's really kind of weird to see. So this interview was partially so that we could talk about when you have been fired. So right. I was curious. You've mentioned a couple things. And I I've been fired too. Um, there was this one time when I was a kid that I set fire. Speaking of fired, I set fire to paper towels. It was it was summer stock. I was rehearsing for <laughs> I love summer stock. I was rehearsing for At the JCC. Ruthless. Ooh, okay. 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 I was I was rehearsing for Ruthless mm -hmm. in Galveston, Texas, which is ironic now I live there. Yeah. Uh but um and 
I had a pyro phase. I was about 12, 13. And for some reason- What? Oh, so that's yeah, when you're I had a pyro into phase. Fire, addicted to fire. Into yeah. Fire. I had a weird pyro phase. How cute. Yeah. And what I a- got in trouble. I mean, I did. They were like, what the fuck? Is she okay? And we got past it and they were very supportive. But I mean, I didn't get fired for that. But I, I, speaking of fire, like I did get fired from that show Girlfriends. Um, that How cool was, that you even got a part on that though. I know. but what a I t- fabulous show. But I tell this story. So <gasps> they, they booked me. Okay. And then what's her name? Um, oh God. What am I talking? She's Diana Ross's daughter. Tracy Ellis Ross. Yeah. So she, <laughs> she didn't like me. She didn't think I was a good fit to play. A, it was basically like Angelina Jolie's trainer that she ended up getting like a, like a workout session with. And so I was, you know, excited to come and with sitcoms, you do your rehearsals. Wait, who are you supposed to be? Uh, the, her, her trainer. You were supposed to be Angelina's trainer. Angelina but, wasn't but, in the, the episode. No, but it was like- but Tracy she, wanted to go to Angelina's trainer and that was you. Yeah. I see. And so she was excited for that. The character was excited to see me. For sure. And so we had this like thing where she was talking about dating some guy. I'd never done sitcoms really. I've not really done that. Yeah, adult sitcoms. Yeah. I, I, I did do like a Fox- pilot right after even Stevens mm-hmm. that could have gone. What was that called? It was called boarding school. Okay. BS. And it was pretty ah! cool. It was pretty cool, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, didn't, just... it didn't have legs. Um, but yeah, so uh, she, she basically, after our first like on stage uh, might've even been, I don't think we were in costume, but it was like, we were getting ready to film that week. Okay. Um, so you'd already done some rehearsals. You'd already been there a few days. And guess what? What? I had to go to Kim Possible right after that and go to LA Studios and go record for Kim Possible. I show up and she'd probably already fired me internally like after that rehearsal. But she's there in the lobby of LA Studios. And she's like, oh, hi, why are you doing? What are you doing here? I'm like, I'm Kim Possible, you know? Like, and she's like, oh, I'm guesting on that. And I was like, you are? And I was like, that's crazy. And, and then I get to my car and I get my messages. Uh-huh. And it turns out she fired me. <laughs> yeah, isn't that crazy? Uh-huh, that is crazy. So she had fired me and I, I didn't even know it. Oh but my she, gosh, she knew, knew it. it. Oh gosh, was that and awkward? She was, well, it was awkward for, for her. her. I know, I'm saying, was she being awkward? She was being awkward, uh-huh. yeah. Oh, gosh. She was being awkward. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But the truth is, is that I guess Hollywood is kind of a small place. Like, yeah. I haven't had too many of those like run-ins. Me neither. Me neither. No. And I don't expect to really in the future. Um, well, people are so scattered now. It's not the same Hollywood. Well, yeah. And like nobody even actually lives in Hollywood anymore, wow. right? They're in Texas like you <laughs> are or everywhere, everywhere. Yeah. You don't see. Yeah. But then at the same time, I'm in like Studio City, Sherman Oaks area. And there are so many famous people. I saw Conan O'Brien at dinner last night. Oh I my walked, gosh, wait, really? Yes. I love him. I, 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 I walked down the street. Um, He's got a great podcast. To a really good restaurant huh. called Jar. And oh my God, I just passed Jar. Obviously we yes. passed Jar when we leave here. Yes. And I always, that's a p- great restaurant. I thought it was. It's like high end, right? I went there on a date like a long time oh, ago. Oh, I thought you were going to say last night. Like, with Conan? Uh-huh. <laughs> His hair is glorious, but Conan, yeah, is it, it re- still gor- glorious? Yeah, it is. Uh, he, and he's just a giant. He's he wasn't as giant as I thought he would be, but maybe he was sitting. Maybe he was like kind of sitting down. Okay. But um, yeah, but he was having an industry dinner. It seemed like okay. He was he was chill. He was okay. really chill. The yeah. whole vibe is chill there. I love it. Yeah, yeah. And it reminded me that I went there for a date with when I was dating this manager guy, uh-huh. which didn't happen often, but he was very cool. And um, yeah, I went on a date there, and I was like, this is weird. Like I haven't been here since I was on the date, you know. Yeah, so yeah, now yeah. it's like. Sometimes uh, when I come back to places in LA, Mm -hmm. it's like you get triggered by some things, but then when you've done enough work on yourself and it's almost like you're revisiting a whole nother life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's freaking wild. I know. I feel like I need to do... I th- this is just making me think like I need to do more work on myself. Like I, I, I really do. Uh, I mean, we all do and stuff. But like even when you're ta- we're talking about stories, like it's ho- so hard for me to remember a lot of things. And I think, did I block it out? Did I not do enough work on it? Okay. And also like there's a lot of shame. I'm like, mm, do I want to tell that story? But I'm so worried about the judgment. But it's like if you're really past it and if you really know you're a good person and that you're on the other side, it doesn't matter, you know? So it's like, hmm, I have some work to do around it, you know? What have you been doing? Like, like, have you just been, I, that's what I'm curious about because everybody's like healing journey and we should get back to like where it started for you, like mm-hmm. with that, mm-hmm. you know, that's part of what we wanted to address when we had our little interview or interviewing each other, I guess. Yeah. So the question would be, if you feel like you have work to be done, mm-hmm. there's obviously no judgment in anyone's like journey. Mm-hmm. What do you feel like you've been doing since trying to like come into 
you know, like with your really great relationship with Jono mm -hmm. and like your new perspective on what you want to do, even doing this podcast. Totally. Like, not a lot, Christy. Not a lot. And but I, you're a good person, though. Thank like, you. I was a shit person until I made the decision to actually. No, I really was. Until I made the decision to like stop drinking and change my whole. Oh yeah, well I was a shit. I truly believe when you put poison in your mouth, like, and I in your body, it's. Mm -hmm. I mean, sorry. I, I also want to say, I know we push mocktails and we're really proud of our. Um, well, I am. Being, <laughs> no, no, we both are, and we're, pr we're proud of our sobriety. But yeah. I also uh, used to love drinking and believe that a lot of people have a great relationship with alcohol. John, my boyfriend drinks. Drink I, all you want. Drink, man. drink your faces off. All right. Yeah. So, in the words of Andy Cohen and Bravo, drink your face off. All right. <laughs> you know, if, if you want, you want to play a game, and we're drinking mocktails, but during the game, you want to drink a drink. Great. I, I of course, of course. I'm not yes. this, the be all say all on that. Yes. But I want to be totally honest. I haven't done a lot of work and I don't, I think I just was raised right. I have good people around me and mm -hmm. I'm not drinking. Got it. And I'm so not you just eliminated about You drinking. just eliminated that. You didn't have to. No, I did like, I had a sponsor then. Yeah. I've done, I did all the steps. Okay. And wow. If you did all the steps, then like you've yeah, done a lot of fucking work. Yes, I haven't and I've done had all the therapy, steps. therapists Girl, and you've stuff done like that. a lot of work. I know, but there are people who do the steps over and over and over again. It's like, you don't wow. really do the first, the steps right the first time. I've definitely done like a policy letters oh my gosh i've done apology letters for people i've been fired with you know to, okay to um you've done a lot of work i, I guess but yeah. i think you have to keep it up and yeah. i don't well it's like what we were talking about with mental health and stuff like it is it is an organ it is like a almost like a muscle where you have to keep working it right out. right yeah. a lot of people say too like a lot of people are scared when it's really good that you'll drink again and things are really good and that's happened to me in the past things have been really 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 good I book a job, mm. I book Raven's home, mm. and I drink again. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, good things can happen. Yeah, also, everyone's got different triggers. Yeah, For me, it, it was, was funny. Like, when my mom died, I thought I would drink again, but yeah. I didn't. I, I think because I knew she'd be so mad at me, you know? Interesting. Sorry, I I'm definitely joking. feel less and less as the longer my sobriety goes. I feel those urges less and less. But there are times, like last, last Christmas, last holiday season, I got to that place. Oh, really? And I'll, I'll, I'll smoke. I'm going to be honest. Like, I'll smoke a cigarette yeah. when I'm super stressed. Like, yeah, you've yeah. known me to smoke a cigarette, like, during my shoot days. Like, Yeah, that's what that's kind of what was making me think, too, a little bit about death. <laughs> <laughs> no, just because you're like, this is so okay bad with for it. you. Well, yeah. no, I, I think you're not. That's why you don't smoke every day. But oh, it is, okay. like, all these things that we do, like, the older we get, it's, like, scary. It's scary. It just feels like everybody has cancer. I know so many people who are losing um, friends and family, we're getting to that older point. I mean, most people I know are losing their their grandparents. They're they're you know yeah. sadly, if not their parents, you yeah, know. And yeah. it's like, what's next? Us? Oh God! God this oh is God! So morbid. I'm so sorry. Morbid. Let's, Cut this. Let's get a guest out. on. No, let's get somebody kidding. fun on here. I'm just kidding. I'm, I'm just kidding. kidding. Okay, um, rapid fire, Christy. What's mm. underwear or underwear? <laughs> oh, you want to do rapid fire? Underwear or no underwear? Let's no, do I'm, rapid fire. Okay, Christy. Underwear or no underwear? Uh, thong. Totally, that's not a, a real rapid fire. So sorry. Okay. okay. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Uh, Monday or Friday? Um, Friday. <laughs> Dream job. Uh, uh, own a spa. Ooh, mm -hmm. I love that. Mm -hmm. um, um, uh, uh, what's something about you nobody knows? I um I like missionary. <laughs> okay, oh, that's cute. Yeah, well, that, look, we uh, we knew that, Christy. <laughs> what woman doesn't? What woman doesn't? <laughs> but you didn't know about that. <laughs> okay, um, since you okay. asked, my dream role is Fanny Bryson, funny girl. Oh, of course. How have you not been that person? And she's People staring at the camera because you People need to idiots. hire her. That's why. Oh, truly. I love it. But you know, have you auditioned for it yet? No, okay. no, no, well, no. Manifest in a, it. In a way, I have. In a way, uh -huh. I have. Okay. Um, I mean, I. Ha but they won't give me a proper audition. But I've auditioned for other things that people know about. But you know, mm. truly, when that stuff happens, I really believe that. Like, I know this sounds so conceited and gross, but I really believe that I'm so talented and that, like, that gets to just be for me. Then, mm -hmm. do you know? I'm like, well, okay. at least I'll always know it. I don't have to prove it to anyone. Mm -hmm. It truly would be wonderful for that audience and other Jewish people and. You know, like, yeah, and I'm a good person and I have such experience with it and I'm actually funny. Yeah. But you're oh, a funny girl. Oh, wait. Oh, well, for everyone else. Kind of. <laughs> Sorry. I know. Like, I truly do feel like, That's yeah, like really I don't cool. need it. I've done enough shows to not need it. That's I don't really need cool. to perform. I love you know? that. No, I wish I'd love that. I love uh, where we're at personally, because even if it's like we have things to work on, yeah. I think everyone can relate to that. Of course. And um, I think uh, we did a pretty good job of interviewing each other. Yeah. If I do say so myself, it was chaos, but that's what this podcast that's what it is. is. Big name chaos bitches. <laughs> well, it should have been that. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank Please you. Please check out merch. Uh, what is it? Rate, follow, subscribe, yep. love on us. We yeah. love you. Yeah, we love you. Constructive criticism is helpful, but please just say nice things because we are working on ourselves. We need a little confidence boost. Yeah, and we're going to start 
start talking to you and maybe interacting with s- s- some of you watching, which would be really great, right? Yes. To talk to 100%. peeps. I love them. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. See you Mwah. next week. Bye. See you next week. Thanks for hanging, you big name bitch. Now come back next Thursday so we can do it all again.